कृष्ण जुगल मिलन जय जय
Standing on the lotus, big lotus, and then drink, drinking the honey. The grammar is what? Bumblebee? Bumblebee. Bumblebee is landing on the lotus and drinking the honey. But here, uh, big uh, uh, nails of Krishna, big nails of Narsingha Dev, they are uh, tearing open the black uh, uh, um, Hirnakashipu. So, Kavi Dev is uh, giving a nice simile here. Tavakara Kamalavare Nakamadabhuta Shringam Dalita Hiranya Kashipu Tanu Bhringam That you tore apart the belly of Hiranya Kashipu Keshava Dhrita Narahari Rupa Jai Jagati Shahari And also Gurudev sometimes he gives us hint that Krishna is four types of hero. He is Dhir Lale, Dhir Shant, Dhir Uddhat and Dhir Uddhat. So in these four incarnations, first ones, second one, third one and fourth one Krishna is also here uh, uh, Dhir Uddhat Nayak because all his activities are very very heroic and uh, Tejasvita full of uh, full of wonders so then Krishna comes oh, and thank you very good You have left. Hansa, Dattatreya, Four Kumar, Rishabdev, you have left. Oh. Anyone come, can count the rays? Dust of Earth, uh, but cannot count the no no glory incarnation of Krishna. Om Gyanat Simarandasya Gyananjana Salakya Chaksurun Miritan Ninatas Mai Sri Guru Namaha. I offer my heartfelt obeisances to the lotus feet of Sri Shiva Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj Madhikshu Guru. And to all Trinanda Sanyasigan, Vaishnava Vaishnavis, the Sambhu Kasya. <clears throat> Drumila, one of the Navayogendras. Actually, Rishabdev is an incarnation also of Krishna. And he had 100 sons, one of which was the famous Bharat Maharaj, which India Bharat Varsh was named after. He was a great king who renounced everything and accepted pure devotional service. He had 81 sons who were Brahmins, following the uh, Karmakanda section of the Vedas, like Smartha Brahmins. Nine sons were Kshatriyas who ruled over the different Varshas, the different continents and countries of the world. And these other nine sons, Nava Yogendras, were like Avadutes, like our Avadut Maharaj. They traveled the world and like not caring for personal uh, appearances or social convention. They were Mahabhagavats and they were capable of giving the highest instructions on Bhagavad Dharma, Sanatana Dharma. So here, Nimi Maharaj is asking, what are the various pastimes of the Lord, past, present, and future, and His various incarnations? Why is He asking? Previously it was said that uh, one should follow one's Ishtadev and give everything to a specific incarnation of the Lord that one has an attraction to. 
we also know in the path of Raganuga Bhakti that we should acquire a certain type of feeling as the sentiments of Vrindavan have and a particular type of incarnation or uh, aspect of the Lord and worship that. So by explaining all the different incarnations and manifestations of the Lord, he's giving him an opportunity to develop some attraction and taste or ruchi for a particular aspect of the Lord. Similarly, Srimad Bhagavatam describes all the different manifestations and ultimately culminates in the 10th canto with Sri Krishna. And when we read systematically, we develop some attraction for one of these incarnations. Advaita machuta mananta mananta rupam. There are unlimited manifestations of the Lord. As Gurudev said, it, it is impossible to describe all of the qualities and all of the manifestations. Just as Anantashesh with his thousands hoods cannot possibly continue and complete the glorification. Come on the Vaman Rupa. Vaman Rupa. Go on. One point I wanted to mention. Um, about okay kesha vadvita vamana rupa jai jagadish hare so vaman dev is the dwarf incarnation of krishna and we know that bali Maharaj was performing a sacrifice and by krishna's arrangement vaman dev came there in the form of a dwarf brahman and requested from him some charity so bali Maharaj being very charitable and a very uh, uh, religious person agreed to this. But his spiritual master, Sukracharya, uh, tried to stop him and said, no, this is Vishnu. You should not give anything. But Bali Maharaj was bound by his duty and oath and his religious uh, duty to give. So he agreed. And Vamandev expanded himself very, very first he said, what do you want? He said, I want three steps of land only. And Bali Maharaj laughed at him. Oh, I can give you so many things, thousands of cows, a kingdom, whatever you want. Many, many wives. And he said, no, I'm a simple brahmachari. I just want three steps of land. So Bali Maharaj said, okay. And he took some water from his Achman cup and tried to make a vow. And Sukracharya actually came into the spout of that uh, spigot huh, of the water pot to block, even trying to stop him from making this vow. But Bali Maharaj took some grass and stuck it in the spout and caused his eye to be uh, poked out. So he made the vow, and then... Uh, Vaman Dave, he expanded himself very large. We know the story. His first step, he, he covered the entire material cosmos and universe. Mm -hmm. The second step covered the pierce, the coverings of this material universe and the causal ocean, causing this causal ocean to drench his lotus feet and become Charnamrita, which actually became the manifestation of Ganga Devi in this world through the heavenly planets down to this earth. Then Bali Maharaj looked at him with surprise and said, Oh, what to do? <laughs> you have taken everything. So he said, What can I give you? Nothing. I can only bow my head. <coughs> Bamande put his lotus foot on Bali Maharaj's head. And that way he surrendered everything. Bali Maharaj is the example of one who can give everything to the Lord. I <laughs> 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 I offer my respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of my Diksha Guru millions of times to my lotus feet at Divine Grace Ace of Bhaktivedanta Swami Sri Prabhupada 
and again onto the lotus feet of my Shikshu Guru, His Divine Grace, Prila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan and Goswami Maharaj, onto the Sanyasi Gan, onto the Brahmacharis, Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis, and all the devotees. Hrishul Gurudev has ordered me to speak about the Pasaram avatar and in the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the appearance of Lord Pasaram came at a time when the earth became overburdened with so many Chatriyas who were unqualified. The Chatriya is supposed to become like the father of the kingdom. They are supposed to provide for all of the citizens in the kingdom as if they are providing for their own children. They must provide clothing, food, home, education, spiritual training, guidance, and complete protection. The, the Vedic king is so responsible that even if the child dies before the father, then it is considered that the king is responsible that he has not uh, properly conducted his uh, management of the kingdom. Just like in the case of when Lord Ram was king, one man complained, my son has died before me. So in this way, the king was considered so responsible. So responsible. But during this time, when Parsaram came, the kings became plunderers and thieves. They were exploiting all of the people by heavy burdens of taxation. They were taking away the valuable goods and valuable production of the Vaishyas and they were exploiting the persons and not giving any proper shelter or charity to the brahmanas. And so in this way, because they were exploiting and because they were not conducting proper spiritual programs and giving brahmins charity, etc., then something had to be done about dealing with all of these uh, evil kings. So, at that time, Parsaram, his uh, mother was killed by one of these Kshatriyas. Her head was removed. His uh, father. Father, father, I'm sorry. Jamadagni. Fa the father's head was removed. So, when the father's head was removed, this became the cause of Parsaram's manifesting in his form as Avatar. And he began to kill all the Chatriyas, it says 21 times. I don't know whether that means 21 generations or 21 times. 21 times he killed all Chatriyas. And after killing all of these Chatriyas, he collected all of their blood into a uh, ghat there in Kurukshetra. That blood was collected there. And after that, I do not know more than that. Okay. At that point, I know. Go on, go on. <laughs> After all the blood was collected there in Kurukshetra. Who collected? In whole world, he, he cut all Kshatriyas. Yes. Then from that place, that place, who collected? He? No. Not. How collected? Huh? Those who were killed at Kurukshetra, then the blood was collected there. Not collected. Automatically. Automatically it drained into this one dot. Five small ponds. Five small ponds. <laughs> the those ponds then became lakes, they became reservoirs, and people go to that dead poor chetra then became a sanctified place. Beyond this, I cannot remember. Anyhow, he killed. <laughs> Twenty-one times, all chatriya. Only those who were in mother's arms, they were Same. Same. 
and when they become big, oh, again and again in life. <laughs> then, Ramachandra. You know Bias also? Bias. Bias. He is also in Parliament. He divided Veda in four parts. And according to sacrifice everything, he collected months of oh, different, different parts. And he told to him, four very prominent disciples. They told to their disciples and thus there are so many sakhas of Vedas. <coughs> and then Ramavatar. Oh, you. Ramavatar. <coughs> In brief. <laughs> oh my <laughs> so the avatar Ramachandra, he came to give Mariana instructions on the proper uh, duties of the Kshatriya saintly persons. So, Lord Brahmachandra took birth in the Raghu dynasty. Raghupati Raghava Raja Ram Patita Pavana Sita Ram. So his brothers... Oh, it is in Vedaja as well. Tell from any authentic book. <laughs> so his brothers were Lakshman, Bharat and Shatrugna. So, all the devotees here know the story. Uh, Ramachandra, king of, uh, son of King Dasarath, it was his time to rightly receive the throne and become uh, installed as the king, the Raj of the Raghu dynasty. But <clears throat> Kal had a different plan. The plan of uh, Lord Ramachandra and Sita in unfolded. And Ram, uh, mother, uh, Kaikei, took a bone that she was given to her by Dasarath, that she had two bones. And at that time, she decided to take those bones, and one that her, her son, Bharat, would be given the kingdom. And that Ramachandra, the second bone was that Ramachandra would be exiled to the forest for 14 years. So, Ramachandra... Understanding that this was the boon that was given by Dasarath to Kaikei, wanted to facilitate the promise of his father, and so he uh, very, very short, not so. Otherwise, two, three days they will. <laughs> so Ramachandra agreed to go to the forest, even though the entire kingdom wanted to go too. He and Sita and Lakshman left for the forest for 14 years. They killed demons in the forest. And then, uh, <laughs> then Sita was stolen away by the demon Ravana, and Ram took the help of the monkey king uh, Sugriva and also Hanumanji, and they rescued Sita back from the kingdom of Ravana. Ravana was destroyed along with all of his. 10,000 brothers and so many different persons. His pious brother, Dabishan, uh, was installed there, and Raman returned back to his kingdom. And uh, so many pastimes that caused one to cry very much. I was in, <laughs> I was in Florida and I watched Gurudev watching the Ramayan, and uh, so many tears were coming. Uh, from and it, even though, in spite so many tears coming from the uh, understanding of Ramayana and his pastimes, we are so encouraged by these pastimes to engage uh, in worshiping the Supreme Lord through the performance of Sankirtan Yagya, which comes later by the Kali Yuga. <laughs> Huh? 
Hi. <laughs> it is perhaps written in Sri Maharaj. Sanjan Purana. I first of all offer millions and millions of dandavat pranams unto the lotus feet of my beloved Gurudev, Om Vishnu Pad, Paramahamsa Pradhaji Pacharja, Astal Tavasarashishima, Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. And the same again unto our beloved Nityananda Pradhishta Om Vishnu Pad, Paramahamsa Pradhaji Pacharja, Astal Tavasarashishima, Srila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, and all the other sannyasis and Vaishnavas. So Srila Gurudev has asked me to say something briefly about the Krishna avatar. So Lord Krishna advents once in a day of Lord Brahma. This is once every 4,360,000,000 years. Once in a day of Lord Brahma. Krishna advents to demonstrate his extreme mercy to the jivas and show us his extraordinary activities. How? The Supreme Personality of Godhead Himself, Swayam Bhagavan, is conducting His pastimes in Goloka Vrindavan, which manifests fully in this Boma Vrindavan, in this, in this world. So, the advent, according to Bhagavatam, is that Krishna manifested in Mathura, in the jail of Kamsa. But we understand when, Vya when Vasudev took Krishna to Vrindavan, Mother Yashoda had already given birth to Krishna there, and that Mathura Nath Krishna merged with the Prajendranandan Krishna in Vrindavan. So Krishna grew up in Vrindavan for the first um, 16 years of his life, and so many wonderful pastimes of the demons coming into Vrindavan to churn the nectar of rasa, that the Lord was experiencing and tasting with his beloved Brijabhasis. All the demons were allowed in on the, uh, by, by Yogmaya to in, in, um, in, encourage and, and bring out so many wonderful um, exchanges of affection. Just like in the Dhammada Lila, how when Mother Yashoda, she bound Krishna, and so much love and affection was involved in this very beautiful pastime after Krishna had pulled down the twin Arjun trees and Nanda Baba had untied the knot then Mother Yashoda was completely um, in anxiety about her relationship with, with Krishna at that time so Srila Gurudev has spoken so extensively on these pastimes and then after Vrindavan pastimes we've just been hearing in San Francisco how Krishna went to Mathura how he killed uh, Kuvalya Pidi, the, the uh, elephant, and the uh, wrestlers, Chanura, Mas Mustika, and then finally he jumped on the dais and killed Kangsa, dragging Kangsa around the arena, and all the different experiences of the audience in their relationship to Sri Krishna is told at that time. So principally Krishna is showing the quality of his relationships with his devotees throughout his Vrindavan Leela. And then the pastimes in Mathura and then the pastimes in Dwarka where he's marrying 16,108 queens. And then finally now we have reached this 11th canto where the Lord himself is demonstrating his detachment from his own family members after the battle of Kurukshetra when 640 million Kshatriyas were slaughtered on that field then the Lord himself realized that his own family members, the Yadus, were actually very powerful. And he couldn't possibly leave with these family members still on the planet. So he made this very beautiful arrangement where the son of Jambavati, Samba, dressed up as a woman and taunted the various sages at Pindraka. And the sages were very um, 
uh, insulted by Samba inquiring from them, uh, do you think, what, what, what sort of child is in the womb of this, this, this young lady? This was a boy dressed up as a, a girl, pretending to be pregnant. So this was very rude and arrogant of these young boys. And at that time, Durvasa, he cursed Samba to give birth to an iron club. And to their horror, when they look underneath his dress, they found this iron club. And they were terrified of the curse of the sage Durvasa, so they rushed to Ugrasen. And they didn't go to Krishna because they were afraid to go to Krishna, but they went to Ugrasen instead and presented in the, in the assembly. And Ugrasen, he ground that club to dust. And we know the story how one little piece of iron was left. And Ugrasen personally himself, he went to the ocean and he threw all those iron filings and that last piece of iron into the ocean. And then the ocean carried those iron filings across to the shore of the mainland where they implanted themselves in these canes on the side, on the shore. And then Krishna um, uh, is, uh, well, well, many inauspicious part, um, omens were manifested at that time and it was understood that uh, something very inauspicious was about to take place. So that time, Krishna suggested to all the residents of the, the male members of the Krishna dynasty of the Yadus that they go to Prabash and have a yagya, a sacrifice to offset these inauspicious omens. And at that time Uddhava comes to Krishna and Krishna gives very beautiful, sweet instruction in this Uddhav Git, which comes just after the chapters that we're discussing now in this 11th canto. And then after that Uddhav Git, it's described the closing chapters when Krishna goes with these 250 million Yadu um, warriors to Prabash to conduct the Yagya to offset the inauspicious omens. And I think it was an eclipse at that time also. Thank you. And after this, Buddha well, then, then with Krishna. <coughs> 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 oh, one thing that Krishna has not come really to kill all demons <coughs> and to take the burden of oh, earth. Really, he has come. Bhakta Vinodaya. So he came from Golok Vrindavan, he took all his associates and Ras Lila from there. And he, he did Ras Lila. Very powerful. To whom? Anyone Vikriditam Badu Badu Bhi Dancha Vishnu Sardhanvata Shariyotath Barni Yedija Bhakti Param Bhagavati Patilabhya Kama Hedaro Brahma Shunatya So this sweet pastime, even more than Basel Rash, even Dham Bandhan Lila, Rash Lila, if anyone will hear it with so much strong faith and then in the guidance of Gurudev he will read and tell to others this. In his poetry also or Bhagavad Katha or in his language he may, if he will do, then very soon <coughs> calm will come to serve Krishna in Kama Nuga Bhakti will come. And when it will come, by the influence of this, his robe will go. Those persons who believe that first bhakti comes, this, kam bhakti, kamanuga, and then his robe goes away. They are dhir. And though don't believe, oh, first we should give up on earth and then we should hear. Oh, they are not. So he has come to place 
he is so sweet past times and thus though who will hear though who will see and though who will by guru parampara they will hear they will be revered and they will have krishna prem for this and second reason was that but krishna never killed anyone vishnu in him he killed all then buddha hota ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ರಾಹೋತ್ರ <laughs> answered the queries of Nimi Maharaja about karma yoga. So there is a general propensity amongst the human beings to eat meat, to enjoy sex, to uh, drink wine. So Veda Vyasa established mantras and sacrifices in order to make this propensity dovetail the Supreme Lord. So part of those sacrifices was the offering of flesh animals. And when this had become exploited by the living beings to such an extent that it was uh, Unfortunate for the animal civilization, the Lord incarnated as the avatar of Buddha to teach ahimsa, non-violence. So non-violence is also one of our principles. Of course, Krishna fought Bhagavad Gita to show that violence used in the service of the Lord can also be performed on uh, dovetail. But as general principle, we have to follow the principle of non-violence, not to give uh, injury to any living entity unnecessarily. And uh, there was a time when our Srila Prabhupada was uh, on the planet and there was, uh, when he was in India, there was two kittens playing while he was being massaged. And while he was being massaged, those two kittens fell into his lap. And the devotees were a little bit amazed. Oh, what's Prabhupada going to do? But then he said, oh, just see how the love is there in every living entity. And this is demoniac. If somebody thinks a, a living being can put his head in your lap, and then you turn around and slit his throat, that is the worst consciousness. So Buddha put a stop to this. He took people away from the Vedas because the Vedas had given the authority to go ahead and perform that sacrifice in order to eat the flesh of the animals. Then Buddha said, don't listen to the Vedas, you follow me. So people followed Buddha and the animals were, of course, very grateful for that. <laughs> and it was a necessary adjustment because the, the Vedas are our mother, we don't want to be without our mother. So after Buddha came Sangacharya to re reintroduce the Vedas, but with a twisted version on the order of Lord Narayan. So if you read the book called uh, Vaishnavi Jai, which is Param Gurudev's analysis of Mayabad philosophy, you'll see that actually this Buddha philosophy, the philosophy of impersonalism of Sankaracharya is exactly related to Buddhism, but with different nomenclature. So it's virtually the same thing. And the confusion is also that so there are two, another Buddha that appeared in Nepal by the name of Gautam. So Gautam Buddha contrived this uh, philosophy that the world is nothing, everything comes from nothing, and we never see in existence anything arising out of nothing. But that was his philosophy. And uh, he real world people are now so they actually believed in and accepted that yes, everything is ultimately a void. So this is called uh, Sunyavad. So Sunyavad and Mayavad are exactly related and Bhakti Prakash Kishamaraj points this out in his uh, book on Mayavad philosophy which everyone should read. The books are here, I'm sure, on the table. Beyond Nirvana. Beyond Nirvana, republished as Beyond Nirvana. So the Avatar Buddha and the risen incarnation are two different people and not the same one. The Avatar Buddha Avatar is our worshipful incarnation of the Supreme Lord. The other one who attained some small realization was a human being. And of course, not the Supreme Lord. Hare Krishna. And then, Prachanna Prachanna Avatar. That is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He will come. He has come already. And preached 
everywhere in the whole world. <coughs> Naam, Sankirtan. By the influence of name Sankirtan, we see day by day it is growing. And by the influence of this, this is called Dhanya Kali. And that is why, by the influence of preaching of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nam Sankirtan, oh, in this Kali Yuga, Kalki will not come. But in all other Yugas, Kalki must come. Also, it has been written in Chaitanya Bhagavat and Lahur Bhagavatamrita and other things. Why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Prachanna? In Shastra, they have, Krishna has come in Prachanna, hidden away as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Not directly Krishna has come. And for that reason, Ved and Upanishad and Shastra Puran also, it hidden way they have told. Because Veda ayam Parkshabado ayam. Parkshabado ayam Veda Bala nam Anushasanam. Like what is Parkshabad? There was a boy. Very beautiful, black complexion. complexion. Oh, playing on flute very, very well. And attracting all. Peacock feather here. And grazing cows. But not name is given. Who is he? No need of taking the name of it. Oh, this is? Parukshava. So Vedas, in this way Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has told in hiddenly. Srila Bhakti Guna Thakur in what Upanishad? Chaitanya Upanishad. He had disclosed all this. Oh, so many praman from Mahabharata, Srimad Bhagavatam, Krishna Varnam, Kishaj Krishna, and so many things. Hmm? So, Nemi Maharaj was very much happy. And then he told, those who don't worship Krishna or any incarnation of Krishna, what is the, their gati, destination. destination. And then he told so many things. In brief, they will have to go in Narak. And by good activities they will go to Swarga. And from there they will again here come. And they will encircle in the encircle of birth and death. Those who will. And those who are wise, they will worship Krishna or his any manifestations. Then he asked, in what age, what jug, in what color, what name of the incarnation of Krishna, and in what way their upasana should be done, how they should be worshipped. First of all, I have heard my thousands, thousands of essences, Lotus Peter of Srila Guru Pat Padma, all the sannyasis, Vaishnavs, mothers, sisters, and everyone, please accept my download pronouns. 
So Gurudev spoke and all Vaishnava also spoke now. So many nice, interesting Harikatha, all incarnations. Supreme Lord Sri Krishna, He is Supreme Personality of God. He has so many incarnations. They are as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explaining to Sanatana Goswami. Sri Krishna is six incarnations mostly. Purusha Avatar, Yuga Avatar, Guna Avatar, Lila Avatar, Mannantara Avatar, and Saktavesha Avatar. So many incarnations. In Saktavesha Avatar, they are Narad, Bias, Prithu, Gyana Avesha Avatar, Bhakti Avesha Avatar, so many different kinds. Avesha Avatar. And so many, many incarnations came. Also, Sri Krishna told to Arjun, oh my dear Arjun, so many incarnations after then, otherwise, so what is you are thinking so sin? Everything, all are my bibhuti, epulets. So, every year we see Sri Krishna so many incarnations. They are very, very interesting. Sri Krishna, all incarnations, when he came in human dynasty, when he was Lord Ram, then he manifest rules and regulations. How can live in this world? Previous life, previous time, so many, many incarnations came, when demonic persons came, also demon rakshas came, that time he killed so many demons and manifest best religion. This way, so many incarnations came. Lord Ram, he is Marjada Purushottam, he manifest rules and regulations. And Supreme Lord Sri Krishna, he came one day of Brahma's day. So there, he will come with all his associates and he is showing his sweetness Leela. Everyone they can hear this Leela, then everyone will be pure and their pure heart, pure mind. After then, Satya Treta Dapar Kali Phor Yuga. Brahma, one day, of Brahma, there are four Chatur uh, Yugas. Mean? Four. Uh, four Chatur Yugas. Uh, four Chatur Chatur Yugas. One thousand Chatur Yugas come. So there, Satya Treta Dapar Kali. Four Yugas, four Yugavatar come. For Yuga Avatar, in Satya Yuga, when Satya Yuga come, and then, so Nar Narayan Esi, Shukla Varna Avatar, appear and meditate, and so to anyone, anyone can meditate, and sitting asan, they are control their senses, mind, and taking your life, after then they put on his forehead, then they are meditating long, long time. In the Satya Yuga, then people lived one last one hundred thousand years since. So long age that time they did austerity. And Lord Vishnu showed these things. Satya Treta Dhabar Kali in Treta Yuga, Rakta Varna Avatar, so meditate, Jagya fire sacrifice, then anyone they did fire sacrifice and they worship to Vishnu. In this way, in Treta Yuga, they are so, Prishni Garva Avatar, Prishni Garva Avatar, he came and he manifest this this fire sacrifice. So then, people, they lived only 10,000 years. They did fire sacrifice. After then, Dwapar Yuga come, more, more pollution, so, people, they lived only, only 1,000 years to 5,000 years, their age. Then they, they did worship to Vishnu. Dwapare Bhagavana Syama Pitavasa Nijayudha. In Dwapare Yud, Bhagavan, one incarnation is coming, and he has four arms. Ayud, Sankha, Chakra, Gada, Padma. And Pita Vasa, Pita Vastra, and like same to Krishna, but not Krishna. So any Dwapar Yuga, this incarnation is coming, 
and showed everyone how can do worship deity. So everyone they worship deity. In this way, in Dwapar Yuga, they serve to Vishnu. But in Kali Yuga, only 100 years age, there are more or less and more and more pollutions coming. And everyone too much busy. They have no time. But how is process? Very easy process they can follow and they will be happy. Their life will be successful. Nana Tantra Vidhane Na Kalavapi Tathasana. Sri Karvajan Rishi spoke to Nimi Maharaj. Maharaj Nana Tantra Vidhane Kalavapi in the Kali Yuga. How they worship to Sri Krishna. They are process. So many, many Shastras. Narad Pancharatra. So many Pancharatra Shastras. How worship to Vishnu, everything, all the rules and regulations so manifest in the earth. Also, Tantra Vidhanina, Nana Tantra Vidhanina, Suti Vidhan, Ved Shastra, Vedanta Shastra, these kinds, they are following. Then they are chanting Sri Krishna's name. So, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu coming in this Kali Yuga. Krishna Vainam Tisa, Krishna. Sangho Pangastra Parsadam Jagai Sankirtana Prayair Jajantihi Sumedhasa Buddhiman Purush, intelligent persons, they worship to Sri Krishna. How they worship? Krishna Vainam Tisa Krishna. Who is this incarnation? Any Kali Yuga, every Kali Yuga, all incarnations come in, but in this Kali Yuga, so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna, he himself, so he came. Krishna Vayanam Tisha, Krishna, Sangho Pangastra Parsatam. Always who is chanting Sri Krishna's name? And Akrishna Pit Vayana Avatar. Also, Gargacharya spoke when he had gone in Nanda Maharaj, Nanda Bhavan, then he spoke Krishna. Asan Bhanas Trayu Yas Grinato Anu Yugam Tanu Onanda Maharaj, your son, previous life, previous three yuga, Asan Bhanas Trayu Yas Sukla Raktas Tathapita. In Satya Yuga, he took incarnation Sukla Bhanavata. And in Treta Yuga, Rakta Bhanavata. In Kali Yuga, also Pit Bhanavata. Or Krishna means Pit Bhanavata. Yellow, man. yellow color, man. golden color. Uh -huh. He is golden color. Who took Radhika's mood and her uh -huh. golden color and he manifest his form. He covered the same, same form and he, her golden color he manifest. So Pitupana avatar means Always Krishna, Krishna, two burns. Always he is chanting Krishna, Krishna. When he appeared, then he manifests this name. Everyone they chant Hari Vol, Hari Vol, Hari Vol. That time he appeared in Navati Dham. So Krishna Varnam Tisha, Krishna Musango Pangastra Parsadam. Everyone when they are chanting Sri Krishna's name, Hari, 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 Hari Vol, Hari Vol, then Mahaprabhu laugh. Otherwise he is weeping. Then all bring, all uh, ladies and anyone they are coming and they are joking and chanting Hari Nam, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, then Mahaprabhu Lord. So in this way his name was Gaur Hari. He is golden color Gaur Hari. And see, Sachi Mata gave his name Nimai. Because this is name is bitter name. So everyone cannot give Najar. Najar <laughs> So, they never gave us, so in this way, Sachi Mata gave his name Nimai. So, he was Nimai Pandit. After that, his name is Gaur Hari. When he took sannyas, then his name was Sri Krishna Chaitanya, who gave full consciousness to everyone and gave this name, Sri Krishna name, and made purity. So, Anga Upanga Astra Parsata Sanjay. When he appeared in this world, then he manifest his 
सेकंड फॉर्म नित्यानंद प्रभु ही अंग उपांग श्री अद्वैताचार्य अस्त्र हरि नाम संकीर्तन ऑल डिवोटिज दे आर पार्षद एसोसिएट्स सो ऑल एवरीवन दे केम इन दिस वे एनी वन कैन वर्शिप टू श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य महाप्रभु संकीर्तन प्राय इज जयंती ही सुमेद स दिस इज कॉल्ड संकीर्तन यज्ञ All the time, everyone, all together, they are dancing, singing, chanting Sri Krishna's name. This is called Sankirtan Yajna sacrifice. So they are great persons, senior and very qualified, who who is chanting Sri Krishna's name or sing in this way. Otherwise, everything lost. They don't know who is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in this Kali Yuga. So everyone busy. They have no time. So all the time working and running everywhere, but anyone easily they can chant, they can speak Sri Krishna name. So other other yoga, what they did, everything they can find in in this Hari Nam Sankirtan. So there are Sri Karvahajan Rishi spoke about Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Deyam. सदा परिभवीष्टो हम तीर्थास्पद शिव बिरीचिनुत शरण भिति अहम प्रणतपाल वंदे महापुरुषते चरणारविंद सुदोस्त सुरे सीतराज्यलक्ष्मी धर्मीष्टयारिज वचसा जदगादर मृगम दयते श्रीतमन धाव वंदे महापुरुषते चरणारविंद वंदे महापुरुषते चरणारविंद महाप्रभु भगवान सचिनंदन गौर हरि ही चैतन्य महाप्रभु सो वी प्रेट इज प्रेट उ चैतन्य महाप्रभु एंड ही केम एपी आर सो ही फुलफिल ऑल डिजायर्स ब्रह्मा शिव इंद्र सो एनी वन प्रीवियस लाइफ दे हैड सीन श्री कृष्ण लीला बट दे ऑल इज प्रेट टू महाप्रभु Oh, we want to see your sweetness, Lila. Please give me pure love and affection. In this way, they came in Navadvip Dham, and there also they did worship to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. See, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu always fulfilled their desire. Bhittarthi aham pranata pal bhavaapti potam. He only one boat crossed the. भव ओषण सो वंदे महापुरुष ते चैतन्य महाप्रभु मोर मोर काइंडनेस मोर मोर मार्सिफुल सो प्रीवियस लाइव सो मेनी इनकारनेशंस केम दे किल डेमोंस दे किल अदर्स बट दे नॉट बिकम डिवोटी एंड दे नेवर सर्व टू श्री कृष्ण श्री कृष्ण गेम एंड आल्सो श्री कृष्ण अवतार व्हेन श्री कृष्ण केम He is hatari gati dae. He kill demons, but gave liberation. So must take liberation. Go, but never give bhakti, pure love and affection. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who is more more merciful. So he came. He took Radhika's golden color because she is Karuna Mai. More merciful, great merciful. If everyone feeling this form and looking. Have they have experience when they are coming? At once they will be free from Maya, 
and all events will be finished, then they can get pure love and affection. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and he gave this pure brain. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we should pray to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When he came in Navadiv Dham, Tattva Sudhus Taja Surev Sita Rajya Lashmi Dharmist Arja Vachasa Jadagata Ranna So, in Srimadu Bhagavatam Karvahajan Rishi spoke, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he played with friends, with boys in river Gange and swimming there. there. Then so many Brahmins, they are chanting Gayatri. At that time, so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took water, so he. Then Brahmins, they prohibited, oh my dear boy, very careful, should be careful, we are chanting mantra. But anyone, they give fear and talking so much, but he never listen, don't care. One Brahman, he is taking Brahman thread. Oh, my dear naughty boy, so all is playing and all is making disturbance. I am chanting Gayatri, you are making disturbance. So I am giving curse you. That time he gave curse, your family life, everything will be finished. Oh, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, with all his associates, Closing the door, singing in Shiva's Angan, closing the door, and one Brahmin wanted to enter, but he could not enter. Then he calls. Hmm. Both. Then Brahman gave curse to Mahaprabhu. Mahaprabhu laughed, okay. My family life will be finished, no problem. But, so I am getting the earth, all family. Uh, Family, uh, family life, and they will be free from ignorance. So I am showing and give him pure love and affection. Then Mahaprabhu showed to everyone, anyone they cannot say, oh, why Jaitanya Mahaprabhu left his old mother, and why he left his wife, young, young lad? So why he left? So anyone able to, anyone saying, but Mahaprabhu showed to everyone because Brahman gave the curse, so what can I do? So my family life finished. So I am taking sannyas. Tattva sudhustaja surev sitarajya lachmin. So they, all demigods, anyone, they cannot live this family situations, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left all things, all desires. He took sannyas. Yesterday also showed Anilam Pippali Khandal Kaap Nivarite Ulatiya Bare Kaap Nari Ulkasite. So I brought Pippali Khandal people, but so not, coughing, not going, more, more coughing coming. So how can do? So I gave. My Paramahanda Guru Pad Padma, Om Vishnu Pad. Astodar Sata Sishti Madhu Bhakti Vedanta Slopa Aman Goswami Maharaj and Om Vishnu Pad Puribraja Kacharya Varja Astodar Sata Sishti Madhu Bhakti Vedanta Slopa Narayan Goswami Maharaj I pay my obeisances all Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis who assembled here to listen some Harikatha from Guru Dev Lotus lips headed by Tridandi Sarnasis So, Srila Guru Dev has discussed about Uddhav Sangbad. So prior to that, when discussion was going on between Uddhav and Krishna, Uddhav understood that Krishna will give up this material world and will go his eternal abode, Golok Dham. Uddhav told, O oh Prabhu, what you are advising me to give up all relatives, and friends, so what you are telling, it is not proper for me, because I am Bishai, I am thinking all, all this thing. So what sannas you are telling to give up? <coughs> so how I can easily get rid of this thing? Moreover, in this world, all are slapped by your material energy, I mean illusory maya. 
very hard to get rid of this Maya. But you have told, E yathamang prapadante Maya metam tarantite. So I don't care for your Maya. I am not fearing for your Maya. I am fearing for your separation. How I will be here without you? I, you are my soulmate. You are my life and soul. Without you, my life in vain. So what shall I do? Then Uddhav told, Tayopa bhukta sakgandha basa What your remnant cloth, sandal paste, and garland and your cloth I am using. Using all this thing, I can get I can get it very easily. Because I am your Das, but I am not fearing for your Maya, fearing for your separation. So please tell me how I will be happy can get it of all these things which you are telling. Then Krishna told, listen, in our dynasty there is a very influential king named Yodhu. Once he was traveling, then he saw one Avadhut. And he is very happy and always keeping silence mood, of keeping silence. Seeing him, Yodhu Maharaj did pronoun to him because in Ancient time, they used to honor the Brahmin always. So told, O oh Prabhu, it seems that you are very happy because face is the indication of mind. Your face is very happy. So what kind of pleasure you have in your heart that you are very happy? You are very qualified to do any karma, but not doing any karma. What is the cause that you became very happy? Then. Seeing his polite mood, Avadut means Dattatriyaji has broken his silence and being costless merciful, told to him, Oh, so listen carefully. In my life, I met so many persons, so many living entities. From them, I learned so many things. I met 24 gurus, Siksha gurus. From them, what I learned, I am telling you, so you can listen carefully. I have learned from Mother Earth, Prithvi Devi, and Agni, Akas, Bayu, Moon, Sun, Pigeon, so many things, 24. The first one, Mother Earth. In this Earth, so many person doing so many nonsense things, but he is so much tolerant. Always forgive mode. Look, we are not doing any worship of Mother God. We are sitting here, we are walking on top of that, on the earth surface, and we are digging hole, we are passing stool, passing urine, and in this modern Kali, so many they are doing so many nuclear tests, so many things they are doing, but it never protest, always come and quite tolerate everything. So from Mother Earth, I learned how to tolerate and the quality of forgiveness. Listen, the trees and mountain, they came from Earth. If you see trees, they never alive for their own. Then everything, their root, their bark, their wood, their leaf, their flower and fruits, everything for others. So if someone wants to do bhajan, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told for the whole world, Trinadopi suni chena, taroropi saisnuna, amanina manadena, kirtaniya sadahari. When Sarup Damodar Prabhu and Rayanamanda Prabhu was discussing with Mahaprabhu, Mahaprabhu told, Kirupe loile nam premu pajay, tahar sarup lakhan suna ram rai. Mahaprabhu is telling, O Sarup Ram, Sarup Ramananda, Sarup Damodara Ramananda, by which process someone will accept Harinam, how they attain Prem, I am telling you. Then Mahaprabhu told, Trinadopi Suniche no Taruropi Sahisruna. We have to be very humble than a piece of blood of a grass. And if you walk on that grass, they will not protest you. And Taruropi Sahisruna have to be more tolerant than a tree. If there is full of fruits, if you hit the tree by a stick or by a stone, they will protest you. 
you are giving. Giving pain, they are giving you very nice, tasty, and not, by which you can nourish your life, they are giving fruit. So, Pasnav have to be like this. And not hankering for his own prestige, have to give prestige to others. So, here, Yadu Maharaj, I was just telling to Yadu Maharaj, the trees, they are living for others, not for them. And mountain also. So, from Prithivi Devi, from Mother Earth, I learned how to give forgiveness. After that, he told, my second guru is Prithivi? Wind, Bayu. Wind, air is two types. One is live air, another external air. The first one, live air, living inside, is not desiring any, anything, only what he need, by that we can eat by his desire. If there is no life here, we could not eat, could not alive. And so Krishna has told in Gita also, Yukta Biharascha. What is needed if you use that, then will be yogi, then will not affect by other mode of natures. So this life here instructing us, don't be attached, and what is needed you can use that only. And outside air, he have to go everywhere. You can see air is here now, going there, traveling here and there. Although they are traveling, they want or not, they have to take so many things like good fragrance or foul smell, he want or not. But the fragrance is the quality of earth, but still air have to taken. And from here is going, then give up here, not taking other place. He always completely detached. Same way, who is sadhak, they have to detach from this material world. Be, have, if needed, you have to go so many places, but don't attach there, like air. So I have learned all this, did, how to be detached, I learned this from air. <coughs> After that he told, my third guru is Akash. Not Joel. Huh. Bayu Akash. Oh. The third guru is Sky. The sky also always detached everywhere. Inside any pot, outside, inside our body, everywhere, but always detached, not attached anywhere. So from Akasa I have learned how to be nearly, how to be detached. After he told my fourth good is water. Even uh, Akash, it seems that the rain is coming. And clouds are covering the sky. sky, but really not so. Akash is always normal, always clean and clear. Those clouds and so many rain and everything is there, but he is oh not quite disturbed. Normal. So a sadhu should be like that. Then he told my fourth guru is water, water always transparent and pure and it's very smooth and sweet taste. So sadhak must be always pure and very transparent, means his external and internal behavior will be same. That means be simple-hearted without any hypocrite. We are telling one thing and behind thinking another thing, not like this. And always be all, use sweet word for others. If someone come, if he could not Feed them nicely or could not welcome nicely, at least you can use your sweet words. What harm if you use sweet words? So sadhak must be always use sweet words and pure and transparent. Externally and internally be same. So also about wind, always pure. Sometimes it blows from one part to another part. No. Sugandha, good fragrance, Sugandha. foul smell. Bad smell and so many things. And sometimes goes through a very far, very good forest smelling flowers and But she, why you is always detached, neutral. Nothing to do. And in the same way, a sky is always normal. So a sadhu should be like that. 
good man, bad man, so many things coming, meeting him, but he will be always normal, nothing to do with others. After that, he told, my another guru is fire. From fire, I have learned that fire eating everything. If you put anything in fire, any good thing or bad thing, you take everything, but not be contaminated. So sadhu, fire digests everything. So sadhu must be like fire. What is needed he can do, but must be always pure. He should not keep inside anything him. If you keep anything inside you, then you will contaminate it. If you digest, then no problem. You are eating, but could not digest, then your stomach problem, this and that. But fire digesting everything, and you not taking any good or bad qual quality of others. So sadhu can mix others, but they should not take any good or bad qualities of material world, then their sadhana will be hampered. So this way I have learned so many things from so many gurus. There are 24 gurus, so we have heard from others and from Gurudev Lotus Leaf. Hare Krishna. Rabi, Shan, and then Kapo, then Ajaga. Om Ajnana Timuram Dhasya Gyanandana Sulakaya Chakshuram Nulatam Dena Tasmai Sri Gurave Nama First of all, I have for my Sastang Dandavat Puspanjali My heart like flowers thousands of times with the lotus feet of Asmadiya Paramaradha Tum Guru Pada Padma Om Vishnu Pada Stotra Sita Sisimat Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj I have for my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Varga Sri Guru Parampara and I offer my pranam to all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis. So, Srila Gurudev ordered me to continue with the narration of uh, Dattatreya, spoken by Dattatreya, explaining how he is looking around the world and being inspired and learning so many lessons from his uh, Dristanta Gurus, the Gurus that teach by seeing them and by their examples. So, Dr. Treya, he explained, fire is my Guru. Why? Because fire is uh, changing at every moment. All the small particles in the fire are moving, moving, moving all the time, but you cannot see it. So, in the same way, all the shapes in the world around us they are be changing at every moment by the imperceptible movements of time and finally everything will be vanquished. So from fire I have learned about the imperceptible movement of time. We forget that life is going by very very quickly but every year when we come here to have the darshan of Srila Gurudev at Baja we see everyone is a little bit more fat and a little bit more grey and so on. So time, but for ourselves, we tend not to notice how time is taking everything away imperceptibly. Also fire, fire is inside everything, but sometimes it's revealed and sometimes not revealed. Like a sadhu, a God conscious person, enlightened person, sometimes they reveal their uh, understanding and realization. At that time, they play the role of guru or teacher in this world. And sometimes, like Dr. Treya, when he was silent, his quality is all hidden inside. So Dr. Treya, he learned this from fire. Now we're coming to next sun. sun? Moon. 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 The moon. Dr. Treya Maharaj, he said, from the moon, I have learned about the nature of the soul. When we look at the moon, one day it's a new moon, very thin. Then it becomes wider, wider, becomes half moon, 
gradually over 16 days it becomes a full moon so the moon is waxing and the moon is waning it seems to be growing and disappearing but actually the moon is always the same this is only our vision so in the same way every atma every soul is the same and transcendental but by our material understanding we think this person is growing and uh, diminishing again so I have learned about the nature of the soul from the moon then that the said the Sun is also my guru why because the Sun is like a sadhu the Sun is in the sky and from the heat of the Sun it evaporates water from oceans and lakes and accepts that and then later sends it back in the form of rain so a sadhu how is a sadhu like Srila Gurudev many many devotees come many people give so many pranami donations but Gurudev he has nothing for himself only at the appropriate time like the Sun he accepts this and then gives everything back how by making very wonderful mandir in Govardhan in Navadip Dham very soon in Jagannath Puri Dham and so on so because the Sun never ex accepts anything for itself but takes from everywhere and gives back at the appropriate time so Dr. Treya said I have learned this quality of the sadhu from the sun Kapoor Pigeon Pigeon Then he said my next guru is the pigeon He n narrated a story once there was a male pigeon and moving here and there as destiny would have it he met with a female pigeon and they became very much in love with each other they like to see each other's smiling faces and they have so many things in common so they entered into a relationship and whatever desires the female pigeon had the male pigeon even though it was he had to undergo so many difficulties he was happy to fulfill all of those desires and before long some eggs were born <laughs> and they gradually hatched and some uh, baby pigeons some chicks were born and the two of them they're very mm, happy and absorbed in their life together with their chicks so one day both of them they went out to collect food for their chicks but a hunter came and the hunter came and snared their chicks in a net so when the female bird saw this without thinking without considering the circumstances at once she flew directly there again into the trap of the hunter and the male bird, he was lamenting. How can I live without my chicks? How can I live without my wife? And he was lamenting, and as he was lamenting, the hunter also caught him. So Dr. Treya, he said, by watching this, I have learned a very good lesson. The lesson is, when a living entity takes birth as a human being, after 8,400,000 species of life, many many births but when that soul takes birth in the human body at this moment the doors of liberation from the cycle of birth and death they are wide open he can walk out but if that person is bewildered by excessive affection for family members then what will happen his opportunity to escape comes but he missed it completely hmm? just like there's one story once there was a, a blind man and he was going begging door to door Radhe Radhe, give me a donation, give me a donation and he would accept the donation and then continue walking so one day he came to a door and there was no answer so he went inside hmm? he was saying give me a donation hmm? but no one would answer so he turned around to walk out but he walked into a wall so he put his hand on the wall he was saying where's the door, where's the door he was blind, he did not know, he'd walked, walked into a stadium, a very big building, big round building. And keeping his hand on the wall, he was walking and thinking, I'll come to the door any minute now. Hmm? And walking and walking, touching the side of the wall. And he was going for a very, very long time, all the way around the stadium. And then just when he came to the door, the way out, as he got there, he scratched his head, where's that door? And he'd been walking for a long time and put his hand back on the wall the other side. Huh? And around he went again. So, yes, it's funny, isn't it? 
No, it's not actually. Hmm? Because, just like the soul, he's wandering round and round through millions of lifetimes, so many births. And then, what happens? He takes birth in the human form. Now he came to the door. If he will utilize his independence properly, he will come out of the endless chain of birth and death. But what happens? Some itching and scratching, and that opportunity is missed, and again, the soul moves around. And so, uh, here, Dr. Treya is saying that by excessive attachment for one's family members and society... Excessive what? Or affection. Any little affection even, mm -hmm. it will increase more and more. Mm -hmm. So don't attach at all. <laughs> so, and you should know, as you are telling, Life is very human life, very, very rare. And he was moving in the stadium. When door came, he began to. <laughs> so, this story is not to tell others, but also to apply on us, as he is telling. At Dattrate Prabhu, I am following you. I have no wife, no children, no relatives, nothing. And so I am very happy. <laughs> then, Ajagara. Thank you. Don't be sheepigen and? Oh, call is here. Time. That is death. Oh, what? Dancing on the head. Huh? And at any time he will come and he will swallow you. So be always careful. Don't lose a moment to be attached in these worldly things. Not anyone. Whole attachment should be in the lotus seat of Guru and Krishna. If you are attaching to Gurudev, Gurudev kindly take that attachment and will give in the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna. Yeah. Go. First of all, I offer my obeisances to Sri Gurudev, present sannyasis, Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis. So, continuing the instru invaluable instructions of Sri Dattatraya to Maharaj Yadu. So, the next Guru, he said, I have a Guru, his name is Ajagra. No? Python. Python never moves anywhere, only he stays in one place and all food enters his mouth. Just like Sri Prahlad Maharaj, on his travels afterwards, he met one yogi who was very fat so, and naked, lying on the dust. Then Prahlad Maharaj was astonished, Maharaj, you seem to do no activity, no work whatsoever, but you are very fat. And he said, yes, I follow the philosophy of the Python. I know that happiness and distress are predestined according to our previous activities. They were just like, no one ever makes a plan how I can suffer today, how I can fall off a bridge, how I can break my leg. No one makes a plan how to suffer, but suffering comes automatically. In the same way, why I should endeavor very much for material happiness, because material happiness will also come by its own accord, according to my past activities. Therefore, I neither try to remove distress or to achieve happiness. I stay in one place and it comes automatically. Therefore, from that philosophy of non-movement, non-activity, non-endeavor. I learned that from the Python. Then the next guru, the five next five gurus deal with controlling our five senses of sight, smell, taste, touch, and hearing. So another guru is the ocean because even though in the drought seasons when the rivers are very small, the ocean neither becomes bigger nor in the flood seasons. From Ajita, mm. Python, we can learn whatever is coming easily 
by that we should maintain our life. If one day, two day, three days, even not coming anything, oh, they should tolerate this, not be violent or anything. So we should be like that python. In the ocean, in the dry season, he does not shrink and become diminished. Nor in the rainy season does he become very swollen. There that sometimes the sadhu gets a lot and he is not disturbed. He does not become excessively materially enthusiastic. Nor when there is a shortage does he become diminished. Just like Sri Gurudev, everyone always says, 50 years ago when he had nothing, he is the same as he is now. Therefore, even though the whole world may leave him tomorrow, he will be unchanged, not like us. So the next five gurus deal with the five senses. For example, one of the gurus is the moth. Because the moth, his weakness is he cannot control his sense of sight. So what you learn from Sindhu? Ocean means we should not be disturbed if so much comes or so much goes. Ocean is always the same. Ocean never changes. Some small ocean is not disturbed. If so much coming, wealth and reputation and position and so many things. Oh, nothing to. And if so much uh, suffering comings, all are abusing you, beating you even, like the dandy. Big show. You should tolerate. Hmm? Then you will be happy and peaceful. Then. So just like a materialistic man or woman, but Bhagavatam says a woman, when she is nicely dressed in sari and ornaments and makeup and lipstick, then a foolish man becomes very excited and he rushes towards her like a moth enters a flame. Then the moth gives up his existence. Therefore from the moth I learned, if one does not control one's sense of sight, then he will lose everything. Another guru is the foolish deer. The deer... Oh, dear. Patanga, that told? Patanga. Moth, finished moth. Okay. And then Madhukrita? The bee. The bee's weakness is. Oh, I'm doing another one. First is moth. Well, the bee, he runs around all summer collecting. Good chance. Madhukri. Oma Gyan Timirandasya Gyanam Jana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militam Jena Tasmai Sri Virameen. So, so many gurus can be seen within this world. If anyone is trying to go on the path of liberation from this material world, then they will have to also use their intelligence. And they will try to have to observe this material world as this Dattatreya Rishi was describing how so many aspects of this world gave him inspiration toward the path of liberation, how he should live within this world, how he should avoid certain allurements and enticements so that this rare human form of life will not be lost, the opportunity will not be lost. So now he goes on to explain about the honeybee. It says, just as a honeybee takes nectar from all flowers, big and small, an intelligent human being should take the essence from all religious scriptures. Oh. And a saintly person should accept only enough food to keep his body and soul together. He should go from door to door accepting just a little bit of food from each family. Thus he should practice the occupation of the honeybee. So in India, they have a system called Madhu Kali. 
And this is the ancient system by which sages would maintain their existence. Those who were renunciates, those who were sannyasis, they would not acquire any kind of property, they would not be attached to any kind of possessions, and even for their very maintenance of their body and for acquiring foodstuffs, they would simply live by going door to door and begging. Of course, in the modern day, in Kali Yuga, there are so many laws of the Western civilization and such, it is more difficult to do. But in Vedic times, all the householders, they would be trained that if any person comes to their door and is begging, oh, it is a great opportunity for them. Here is a saintly person who is coming. <clears throat> they understand that this saintly person should be honored and served just as if he is Atiti Bhagavan. That means the Lord Himself, God Himself coming to my door. Now I have an opportunity to serve the personality of Godhead in the form of this guest. So the saintly persons would go from door to door. They would stay only a very short period of time. It was described that Sri Shukadeva Goswami was like this also. All the great sages, they would come to a householder's home. Only long enough they would stay, just long enough for them to milk a cow. Why? Because very short time they would accept a little bit of donation of milk from the cow to maintain their bodies, but what would they give in exchange? While they were there, in that place, they would distribute transcendental knowledge into the hearts of the householders. And by their very presence, by their very example, they would show detachment from this world. So, a saintly person should maintain his existence without attachment, without accumulating. Uh, just as the honeybee goes from flower to flower to flower, and takes a little bit from here and there. So the saintly person should be like this. And also in relation to the Vedic Shastras, to the scriptures, transcendental knowledge, he should understand, just like the honeybee is taking the essence from a flower, uh, the pollen from the flower. So similarly, the saintly person, he should understand the real meaning, the true meaning and deep meaning of all Shastras. He should not be, become captivated by some of the uh, pushpavachya, the flowery words of the Vedas, which are sometimes there to encourage less intelligent persons to perform Vedic ritualistic activities for elevation to heavenly planets and such in next lifetime for higher states of material enjoyment, but rather he should take the essence of all Shastras, which is pure devotion, pure bhakti, to the lotus feet of Bhagavan. Then elephant. Elephant. <laughs> so, then the next guru is the elephant. <laughs> so, a saintly, a saintly person should never touch a young girl. In fact, he should not even let his foot touch a wooden doll in the shape of a, of a woman. By bodily contact with a woman, he will surely be captured by illusion, just as the elephant is captured by the she-elephant due to his desire to touch her body. You know how? Yes. Oh. Tell them. Yeah. So, we should be very careful, very careful. So, vice versa, not for only Omens. Yeah. In India they have so many elephants and there is a method for capturing a male elephant. In forest. In the forest, in the jungle. Uh, the male elephant is roaming here and there in the jungle. Very, very difficult to capture him. But because the male elephant is very much attached to the female elephant, the male elephant becomes attached to the female elephant by dint of the desire to touch her. So, what they do is they take a female elephant who has already been captured, already trained, and what they do is they train her to go in behind a pit that they dig in the earth, a very big, dark, deep hole. And covered, with and covered with grass so that it cannot be seen. So the female elephant is going in front of the male elephant. Male elephant sees her and is attracted and wants to touch her. So what happens is the female elephant is trained to lead the male elephant and she goes just around this hole 
But what happens to the male elephant? He doesn't see because it's covered by grass and he falls down into the hole. And once he is down in the hole, now what do they do? They don't feed him. They don't give him any food. For, so many, for many, many days, gradually, gradually, the male elephant becomes weaker and weaker and weaker. He has no strength left, practically. And now they use the, sh the female elephant to pull the male elephant out of the hole, and now he's completely captured. Uh, yes. They get an iron chain oh. to see elephant, and she goes. <laughs> And then she ties the chain around his neck, neck and, <laughs> and pulls him out of the hole. So, yo, <laughs> this is the wedding ring given by the female elephant. To the male. Don't laugh, but take the essence of this story. Don't be male elephant. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. She was a witch in disguise. She was beautifully dressed. 
It's enchanting what we have I don't think of him and constantly Krishna or you, I cannot be Making everything else Only to breathe in my sleep Follow him It gives only Hare Krishna, some devotee has requested for initiation. It will take place tomorrow 9 a.m. And fire sacrifice will take place in Nandagopal's property 10 a.m. headed by Sripad Tirtha Maharaj. So I am requesting Nandagopal to contact Sripad Tirtha Maharaj. Where is the place and what Indian is needed? 